What's going on, everybody? It's your host, Dominic Peterson, host of the Doug's on 503 podcast, where we talk all things Oregon football. Welcome in, welcome in, as today we're going to do a get-to-know series with a special big-time 2023 recruit signee. I got 2023 defensive lineman Terrence Green in the building. Say, what's up, man? Yes, sir. What's up? How you doing, man? Let's go Ducks. Let's go Ducks, indeed, man. Big-time, big-time defensive line, <clears throat> lineman signee. Standing six foot five, two hundred sixty five pounds, according to two four seven Sports, uh, coming out of Cy, uh, Cy Woods High School, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's Cy right. Woods out of uh, Cypress, Texas. Saying that yeah. right? Okay, just got to yeah. make sure I'm pronouncing everything right there. And then uh, you announced your commitment. Looks like December twenty first, you became a duck. So, congratulations on that. Two four seven uh, Sports composite has you listed as the number 40th defensive lineman in the 2023 class, number 53 player in Texas, and number 295th nationally. So top 300 player in the class, top 50 in your position, big time, big time, and you're ranked higher in other composites as well. So, man, big time signing for the Ducks for any fans that didn't know who you were yet. So a little background for those guys. Um, yeah. So to start out this uh, interview, Terrence, I always like to deep dive into your personal life a little bit, get to know who you are as a person. Uh, let's just start out uh, talking football as well. And you, what age did you start playing football? What what age did you start getting into the game? Yeah, I can't can't really say an age. Um, I'd probably say like seven if I had to guess. But um, at oh, first really? I was a basketball kid. Yeah, I played basketball. Okay. That was um my first love. And then my mom took me out to try flag football one day. And um, I really didn't like it at first, but um, I ended up doing good. And then, then ever since then, I, I played and then Little League and all that. And mm -hmm. I just stayed with it. Nice. Okay. So you started out more of, of a basketball player early on. Yeah. Uh, that That's interesting. Like more of a, a two-sport athlete. Did you did you uh, continue playing basketball uh, throughout yeah. your, uh, your uh, career? Yeah. So I played all the way until like – freshman year of high school um when I got to out here to um Saw Woods it was kind of like um I don't know kind of like two sports was kind of iffy mm -hmm. for me I kind of stuck with the football and it, it all worked out but yeah I, I stayed with um football did track and stuff like oh, nice. that so I explored yeah. a couple of different athletics 100% man so how do you think basketball being a two sport athlete kind of translated mm -hmm. into your game of football and kind of helped you out there I would say like conditioning wise and then like being explosive, you got to be like physical on the court as well. You can't, you know, like so. I think both sports, you got to have some physicality, and then just like hustling and you know running back and forth is like that endurance piece. A hundred percent, yeah. On the court, running up and yeah. down as a big man, that's big time for stamina. Hundred yeah. percent. Um. So did you did you watch football at all? Did you did you ever did you get into the game by playing or did you did you watch it all? Did any special uh, players that you kind of watched or anything? Like I, that? It was really my mom just making me like try different things and okay uh, so for her i thank her for that nice. i think so um it was just like that and then once i kind of got into it little league i knew i had some and i was like faster with faster than most kids and um, more athletic and um so i started watching like johnny manzel and stuff i played offense at first i was like tight end receiver okay quarterback stuff like that so nice. i watched all the guys and just watching them and what they could do on the field inspired me and I used to watch D'Anthony Thomas too, man. <laughs> yeah, D-A-T, yeah, that. <laughs> 100%, man, yeah, D'Anthony Thomas, man, big time. Funny story of D'Anthony, actually, I was uh, I was a little kid. Of one of my, I think it was like my second Oregon game ever, and I yeah. was uh, the, the the on Friday, the day before, and uh, I was on like the practice facility just walking around and seeing it as a kid, and dude, yeah. D'Anthony Thomas comes running by. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, he's right there. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. That was yeah. a funny story about DeAnthony, man. Yeah, great story. So shout out your mom as well, opening your mind up, getting you on the game of football, and look where you're at now, 100%. So shout out mom for that. So you, you really got attached to the game of football as you played it, yeah. uh, as you watched mm -hmm. it. What, can you list maybe three reasons why you like the game of football most? It's like as a guy, as a, as a you know, as a, growing into a man, it's like being able to be physical and go out there and, like, you know, do certain stuff you can't do on the street. Like, you can go out and basically try to hurt people for, yeah. like, just for fun. And, like, um, so for, like, all football players, I think that's why we're different because we willingly go out there and try to kill each other. Oh, so yeah. that's one, just being able to be physical. Uh, it's, like, life problems or whatever, you know, you're going through it. It, it makes me happy. Like, 
Mm-hmm. It brings me joy being able to uh, go to war with my brothers and uh, just make plays. And I also know, like, um, third, I would say, is being able to provide for my family. If I stick with it and put all the work in, that the game of football will bless me back. So I think those three right there. Oh, yeah, 100%, man. I love it. I, as a man, you said it uh, importantly, like, as a man, you got to let that violence out in some type of way or fashion. And it's a beautiful yeah. game of football that, you know, you have a path to not only do that and mm-hmm. let it out, but you also have a way to get paid a handsome yeah. dollar <laughs> doing it. So yeah. it's amazing, man, 100%. It's a great way to let out the aggression. And it, you can't just do that on the street. So it, it's a great way. Yeah. Um, Speaking of, of, of football, you know, listening to music is a big way to get motivated, pumped up before a game, before a big game, mm-hmm. getting getting into the beats and all that. What, what's kind of your music taste? Who who are your go to artist before a game? Um, I would say like Lil Baby, NBA Young Boy, rappers like that. But oh yeah, I really listen to like a lot of different stuff. It just depends. I like old school rap too. Uh, my mom grew up on stuff like that, so it's like too for all that type of stuff. So it just depends. Sometimes I like chill music. It just depends on. How I'm feeling, but definitely my favorite too is probably Lil Baby and Young Boy. Okay, so yeah, hip hop's more your lane right there for sure. Yeah. Like rap and stuff. Yeah, I had one recruit yeah. one time tell me jazz was their favorite before, yeah, before a game. I was like, are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's some pretty chill stuff though. Like relax your mind, I guess. You know? Yeah, but I mean, everybody has their lane, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. So. Uh, you know, getting into the football, back into football aspect type of things. Um, where do you mm-hmm. feel most confident in your game as a defensive lineman? You also said you played yeah. offense. So yeah. do you maybe see that in your future? You Can, can you play some offense in college? Nah, I'm saying no. defense. <laughs> All defense? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, or unless they have me in, like, field goal and I go out for a route or something like that. Then, yeah. Okay. But, um, Josh Connerly did it this year. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> good, good job <laughs> with you, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say uh, my skill set that, that I really I like is is like my length and uh, my ability to to stop the run and just um, get an offensive lineman back on their heels and getting them back in the backfield to create havoc. And um, yeah, I'll say that right there. And then also like um, I don't know, just my power, my strength. Like I'm not really a big finesse guy. I, I like to use my power and my strength and just dominate them. You know, I'm like offensive lineman. You see. So I would say that. And then um, I think me going, going to Oregon and being developed by Coach Love uh, strength-wise and then Coach Tony and Coach LaPoy, I think my uh, speed and all that would even be even better. And then all that, I'll be an all-around player once I get there. Oh, yeah, 100%. Can't wait to see how you develop uh, once yeah. you get here. Uh, speaking about that, uh, when do you get on campus officially? So I'm um, – I think I'm supposed to be going June 15th, but I'm definitely going to try to get out there a little bit earlier than that because I graduated in May. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, you speak about some qualities that you you really enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, about yourself on the field, um, some some yeah. good things. What, what What's probably one word that best describes you? Just one word. One word. On the field. Oh, on the field. Uh, I would have to go with um, – competitor man I, like there's been like I would like to say violent and aggressive and all that that that's cool but I think competitor man because like there's been some games where we've been down and it's like you like you can see the emotion from the stands or when you watch and you can tell I, I care about what's going on and I care about the game and I'm not trying to lose this game so um I think everyone likes to use the word violent and aggressive and stuff but I'm a competitor so I I, a lot of people like to shy away from that but I think that's what's going to make this class good for Oregon. It's like we got a bunch of competitors who right. like it and stuff. So, yeah, I would say competitor. Yeah, I really like this class, man. A whole bunch of player of the years in this class, like top, mm-hmm. you know, all-American guys. I, re- I really love it coming all together. Uh, speaking about being a competitor, you know, with being a big-time competitor, can, there can be a lot of nerves playing big-time games. I mean, you play in Texas, you know, that's that's big-time, mm-hmm. big-time games in high school. Um, yeah. What what do you do maybe to calm your butterflies before a big time game? Uh, I mean, so I'll say like my first first year on varsity was sophomore year. We played Katie. Katie High School has won so many state championships in Texas, and we played them. And um, but I'll say once yeah. once you get in that first game, and you know, it's like you make that first play, and I think all the nerves go away. It's like I made it, and um, just believing in yourself and 
believing in your abilities and what your coaches taught you and everything you work for. So I think that's what calms me down. And, you know, I just believe in myself. I don't, I don't really think too much is, you know, so I just think believing in myself. 100% man. Love it. Love it. Um, also, so you got, like you said, you mentioned there's a whole bunch of competitors in this class, um, you know, for future recruits also, if they're watching this video, maybe in the future, what qualities, in your opinion, make a good team captain? What do they need to have for, for a good team captain? Uh, you got to be a leader. You can't be afraid to get on your guys if, if they messing up or you see something you don't like or you know, like, this is wrong or you can't be afraid to be a leader. Um, I think we tend to shy away from it sometimes, but um, – or, you know, like, those are your teammates, so you don't – you know, you don't want to create a bad vibe, but – we all have the same goal. We all want to win a national championship. So I think I think being a leader is number one. Um, you can, I don't you can't be really be a hypocrite. You know you got to be willing to work just as hard as you telling them to work. Or you got to you got to lead by example, and then um, just proving yourself and going out and and playing and uh, your name got to hold weight. I think you can't just you know yeah, yeah. you you got to. Uh, Put your money where your mouth is, I guess you could say. But you, you got to be a competitor. You gotta, you gotta be a dog as well. You can't, you know. So, a team guy, not really, you can't be about yourself. It's, it's bigger than that. So, just I think those are important when you, um, you want to be a key piece to a team, and then if you want to be a, a captain on that team. Facts, hundred percent, man. I, I, I love it. Also, I, a big one for me. If you're a leader, you got to be vocal. You know, you got to be out there. You got to be, you know, hundred yeah. percent. Lead by example. Love it, love it, love it. All right, well, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's start talking about Oregon football. So the Ducks just, you know, just capped off a, a ten win season and Dan Lang's first uh, year here. Bo Nix is returning. A lot of hype with the program right now. Uh, what are you most excited for the about for this twenty twenty three season? Uh, I'll just say getting there and be able to compete and um, trying to be a true freshman with all my guys. Like, uh, I think this freshman class wants to come in and compete. I don't know. I don't think we have any red shirts, to be honest. I think we all want to come in and compete. But um, I know Bo will come back and do some nice things. I know he has unfinished business. Um, he played his butt off, man, all season. Regardless of hurt, he tried. So um, I think Doug fans got a lot to look forward to. I got a lot to look forward to just – being able to, whenever they call my name, you know, I'm ready and my guys will be ready. So I think, you know, it's going to be a good season and we're going to bring a natty to uh, Eugene while I'm there while we're 23. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be special. I, I really do think it's, we're going to change the game for Pac-12. I think people sleep on Pac-12 too, though. But oh, yeah. a lot to look forward to with this new class and then uh, people who are already there too. Yeah, hundred percent, man. They definitely do. I, I I agree with you. They sleep on the Pac-12. I mean, the Pac-12 finished with six top twenty-five teams, led the nation. I mean, that's that's really good. So, and there's a lot of good quarterbacks coming back this year in the oh, yeah. conference. So it's gonna be fun for you, defensive lineman, man. Hundred <laughs> percent. So Dan Lanning, your head coach, had a big first year here. Um, you know what? What do you like about him? You know, you committed to him. What 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 made you commit to him? Um, uh, I like that he's a defensive mind, like. Usually the coaches is like offensive minds, but if you want to be a defensive guy, Dan Lannon is he's a great example of that. He obviously cares about the offense, but he, he puts just as much into defense, if not more. And um he's a great guy. Like the way he leads, uh, you could tell like he cares about his players, he cares about family. Um he's a big family guy. And um I just think that right there and the people he got around him, nobody's like um snakes or, you know, stuff like that. He just got good team around him. Uh, he he want to know your story. So, you know, like it's it's one of them coaches, it's, it's a connection there. It's not going to be, uh, you don't really know nothing. He don't, he barely know your name or, you know, so he really want to know everything about you and why you do what you do. And um, I think, man, I think he could do something special. I think he's young too. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a big thing. Uh, being, you know, a younger coach, you're able to connect with the recruits a little bit more. Um, yeah. and probably some other coaches and man if a coach yeah. doesn't know your name dog you better, you better get out of there yeah. you know what I mean so yeah. yeah no definitely definitely good uh Dan Lanning definitely treats all his recruits with respect no matter you know if you're a two-star you know coming to oh, yeah. like, or a five-star I, I always I've always seen that I've always yeah, heard sir. that so that's one thing too I was a, a three-star uh before I before I was even like on my four-star mm. and um they 
stayed the same. I remember um, on my first, I think, UV, we had a recruit down there. He said one of his head coaches didn't talk to him. Um, he was committed there, but um, I told him, no, nah, Dan Landon go call you. He going to make sure, you know, that you feel uh, – like it's it's the same way you feel about them, they feel about you, and yeah, uh, it's mutual. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a real genuine connection. That's good. It's good to hear, yeah. man. Um, so big class. I think you guys have about twenty eight guys coming in in this uh twenty twenty three class, which is a pretty big class. Um, any any guys that you kind of are close with, like a best friend type deal that you've uh, formed yeah. a relationship with? Yeah, I'll say like um all the D linemen, like Blake Purchase. Johnny Bowens, me and him is like I seen him on um a couple of visits, but me and him gotta get closer. But it was it's like that Texas connection. Me uh, and Ashton Porter, we obviously rivals in high school. We he's like he lived like probably like his school probably ten minutes away from me. Oh, so wow. we play each other. Um he's a competitor, I'm a competitor. Um so yeah, him, Tyler Turner, um talk to most of the guys. Most of the guys are active in the group chat and stuff like that. So well, it's, once we get there, it be even better connection. But uh, Mateo, he got a good family too, man. Um, just all those guys, they all good guys, and they all want to, you know, want to win. They're genuine people. Yeah, 100%, man. Six D linemen in this class. A lot of you guys from Texas too. Like, that's that's yeah. kind of cool to see that Oregon's building that pipeline in mm -hmm. Texas. Really yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Any recruits in this, in this class that you're really excited to play along with uh, in specific? Uh. Let me see. I'll say all of them, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. 100%. I'll say all of them. Yeah. That's a good um, answer, man. No worries. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 like hyped for what the defense was is gonna do and what's gonna show you. I think we got a lot of players, man. The D line. It's gonna be a lot of us moving around different positions. I think we all are capable of doing that. And um really just everybody. Like the offensive guys we got is crazy too. Dante is nice. <laughs> hey, he, in the all American game, man, he he trucks on the dude, flew back. I'm like, damn, but <laughs> Dante is oh, nice. Man. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to watch him. That's going to be Yeah, he, he's, he's a power back. He don't shy away from contact. But really all those guys, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what we got and what we're going to do together. 100%. It's going to be awesome. Um, You know, we talked, you know, a lot of positivity about your game, what you're really yeah. good at. Let's, let's kind of shift on maybe what's one thing that you feel you need to work at on your game coming in. Oh uh, yeah, I would just say um, I feel like I'm explosive off the line, but um, just like not, I would just say pass rush, just being able to know what moves to do when and um, using my hands a little bit more, but really just that and just just emphasizing on getting in the weight room, training harder, um, getting faster. I'll just say just getting faster. I feel like I'm I'm strong enough, but just getting faster, having that that twitch to me. Um, you know, so I'm really humble about stuff like that. I feel like it's always room to improve. Mm -hmm. So really just getting that 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 quick twitch to me. Um uh, feel like I got quick feet and everything, but that that um that speed right there. Uh just finishing plays and getting to the quarterback, just finishing the rush. And I think Lapoy and Tosh I mean Lapoy and Tony go do a great job with that. So Yeah, I was just about to ask you that uh Tony Tony Toyoti, your position coach. Uh yeah. what 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 puts your belief in him that he'll he'll get you to that next level and get your weaknesses back uh, up to strengths? Uh, just the way I see how he believes in me, um, mm -hmm. like the style. I, know, I feel like I know. I know actually. I know that he know what he's talking about. Um, you know he he proved himself like being in meetings with the with the players and how he breaks down stuff. How he teaches them. It's like nothing's too rushed. It's, it's comfortable. Like the players are comfortable to ask questions in the meetings. He'll get up and show you. Um, He's not an old guy, so he can move around. He can show you what he's talking about. Okay. Um, Tosh as well. So they know what they're talking about, and they, they're good in explaining things too. So, you know. Did they, uh, did they like, show you on a visit? Did they did they show you anything, like any, you know, showing you how they move and stuff, like, you know, yeah. getting down well, with you on the, uh, on the floor? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I went for a practice, um, I seen them do the drills and stuff like that. And, um how they explained it all. And then um, also when I'm just in there, if I had a question, like they just wrote it up for me and explained to me because, I mean, I knew Oregon was going to be the place for me anyway. So, um, yeah, they, they broke it down for me. Um, they go get the defense and all that to me. I think it will be good. 
hundred percent, man. So big, big schedule loaded up next year for 2023. Yeah. Uh, I'll be at all the home games, so I'm trying to go to Texas Tech yeah. too. Uh, and speaking oh, yeah. of that, any specific games that you're real excited for next year? Uh, USC, um, Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. So I don't want to come home. I want to come home and play in my stadium, man, and whoop Texas Tech. Yeah. Um, shout out to them though, too, man. They believed in me from the jump with with all the football stuff too. But nice. um, just dominating. Um, I think those at Washington too, man. It's, man, I think the whole schedule, to be honest, <laughs> um, it's, it's a lot of good teams that uh, we got to go out and compete. We ain't sleeping on nobody. So, really, every game. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, that Washington game, man, I, you guys got to get that one for me, man. <laughs> yeah. That one was tough this year, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, your recruiting process, uh, you know, like you said, Texas Tech was kind of in it, too. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of break down, you know, your final schools, how it went down and you know, yeah. why you kind of put your trust into Oregon, like what coaches mm-hmm. were, you know, were always there throughout your recruitment with the Ducks and what other schools were kind of in it for you towards the end there? Uh, I have to say, like, Texas was in it. Michigan State was in it. Um, Miami and Florida was in there, but they really wasn't. They weren't competing how uh, Michigan State and them were. I mean, in Texas was. But, um, man, what – to be honest – the first time I went to Oregon, like as a little kid, I always I always watched Oregon. Once you know, once I got into all that, but once I stepped on campus, it was different. I didn't even see everything until my OV. But my my first visit, I was like, yeah, man, it's it's different. And um, you know, so really that, and it's like I kind of felt in my heart that was the place I wanted to go. It's far from home, but with like the support my mom gave me, like you know, like she wanted me to chase my dream. So, um really just stepping on campus for the first time. That's what drew me there. And then the coaches, like, constantly come to see me, saw me at spring ball, uh, just calling me, checking on me. Um, Texas and Michigan State, great people, great coaches, but Oregon was a place for me, and I just felt that it was right in my heart. And that's why I chose Oregon is the people, the facilities, um, the countless opportunities there, but really the people because – Without them, man, I don't think I would have went if it wasn't to, if those coaches weren't there. I don't know Oregon, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, who was who was like maybe the first coach to reach out to you and get get that relationship started? Oregon. Yeah, for Oregon. Coach Tony. Oh, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I was at yeah I was going to a soccer game one day and um he had hit me on Twitter. He called me and um. He told me he was gonna offer me, and he told me he just got to talk to my head coach. And he said I'll call you tomorrow, and then that's what he did. And so he he kept his word, and he offered me. He talked to my mom, and um, he a real good guy, man. That's that's my guy. So that's awesome. I him. That's awesome. So you're coming in, and this next year is your freshman year. Any specific yeah. goals do you have uh, set for you uh, this coming freshman year? Uh, being a true freshman, making plays, um, being accountable. And then just putting on a lot of muscle and, and of course, getting some NIL deals and, you know, marketing myself. and um, But just, like, moving my way up and being, being able to be a true freshman, get some sacks. And, um, I don't know, try to break some records, if, it, if that, you know what I'm saying. But with just being the competitor and whenever they call my name, I'm ready. Man, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, just elevate. And, man, my, my main goal is to go to the league. So this is just another – um, a chapter that I uh, got to go through. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, yeah, in my, in my opinion, the the D line needs some help. They need some guys. They need some playmakers. Yeah. So I think there's a definitely tremendous big time opportunity for yeah. you uh, to to get some play time early and have a big time freshman mm-hmm. year. I, I definitely can see that. Um, that being said, this is the last question I have for you. Um, when mm-hmm. you're when your Oregon career is all said and done, and you're done being yeah. a duck, and you're the number yeah. one pick in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What do, what do you want to have accomplished here? What, what, what do you want to have done? Um, Definitely win the Natty. If we like, I want to go back to back. If we could do a three-peat, man. That would be great, too. But definitely put a Natty on the table. Um, win some awards, of course, like personal awards. Um, break records, like stack records, tackle for lost records. But just building a family um, that when football is all said and done, um, I got something to fall back on and been on relationships. And, you know, I think that's what it's about getting my education. Mm. Um, just having something to fall back on when football's done, but just setting records and just 
making a name for myself and um, representing my family, my last name, and showing people like I am who people say I am or whoever doubted me, this is who I am. And, you know, y'all slept on me, but, you know, it's cool. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And, and the fan in me, dude. Like when you go talking about natties, this is <laughs> let's go, cause yeah. man, Oregon, and we'll have one yet. So that would be historical, hundred yeah. percent. That'd be yeah. big time. Uh, yeah, Terrence, man, I really appreciate the time. This is uh twenty twenty three defensive lineman Terrence Green here on the podcast. Uh, do you want to shout out any social medias for Duck fans that might not be following you yet? Oh yeah, um, I need to get my IG followers up, man. Um, <laughs> D one underscore T zero. Um, that's my IG, and it's it's the same on Twitter and all that. So all my handles are the same. So if y'all looking for me, it's all the same. But I need my IG followers to go up, man. Yeah, go get them on Instagram, Twitter. Really appreciate you, Terrence. This is t- that's a sure. 2023 defensive lineman four star coming in this next year. He definitely, I definitely think he has an opportunity to get some early play time. Really appreciate the interview, guys. Anybody who's watching, make sure to like, subscribe, share the video. And uh, most importantly, I know the algorithm helps with all that. But most importantly, guys, word of mouth, telling your friends and family about the podcast helps grow this podcast faster than anything. All right. I'll check you guys in the next one. See you later. Go Ducks. That's right.